Now we're on. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Pentecost. It is the birthday of the church. We are here to celebrate Pentecost. See the choirs all in red. See how nice that is. Um, the color of Pentecost. Um, and we are also honoring our seniors, our graduating seniors today. So I hope y'all get real comfortable because this live will be a little long today because we have communion and we have that. So just, you know, kind of relax. Just get in the spirit of it because this is the birthday of the church. Pentecost is the birthday of the church, the day the church was born. So we'll be celebrating that. Um, there are just a couple of announcements that I want to lift up. One is the how to give to Swansboro United Methodist Church. And I'll admit it, I'm an old person. I don't understand it, I still use checks. But this is a different way, a new and I'm told better way. So it, it, it's in your bulletin. Um, if you want to put a carnation um, for Father's Day in honor or in memory of someone, um, the form is in here. And you know, Father's Day is just two weeks from today, so we need to, to go ahead and, and do that. Um, the other announcements, what else do we need to say? Oh, the piano. We have, a, it is not a new piano. This piano was given by the family of Joyce Daniels. It was her piano. It is one of the best pianos. Isn't that right, Kristen? Is it a good piano, Kristen? <laughs> it is. Carnegie Hall was with the music. See. And, and Joyce, being a wonderful musician, took good care of it. Whenever the piano tuner came to tune the church pianos, he always went to Joyce's to tune hers. It, it has been well taken care of. So this is a, a gift, and you will be hearing it for the first time today. Or you have already heard it, but you didn't know you were hearing it. But now you can appreciate it, because you'll be hearing it. Um, don't forget, there's Vacation Bible School. Does anybody want to say anything about it? The Vacation Bible School is coming up. Um, there are all kinds of announcements. Please read. Um, please read all of your announcements in the bulletin because they're there for, for our, our, all of our edification. But we are happy that today is um, a Communion Sunday, it is Pentecost Sunday, and it is Senior Sunday. And so we're doing lots of things today. And we hope that we do them well. And now, let us pray together. Lord, may the words that we say with our lips, may we believe them in our hearts as we come to worship you today. Amen.
Please remain standing and join me in the greeting, which is printed in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also we will sing to the Lord as long as we live. We will sing to God all we have God sends forth the Spirit, and all is made new. The opening hymn is Charles Wesley's wonderful hymn, Love Divine, Our Love's Excelling, number 384. standing as we, everybody doesn't have a bulletin, do they? If there are people without bulletins, raise your hand. There are some, do you have some? He's got a couple. If you have some that you're willing to share, give one to someone whose hand is. We actually think it's wonderful to run out of bulletins, only it's too bad that we run out of bulletins. Okay, um, let us read together the collect for the day. Almighty God, from whom every gift and grace does come, let the brightness of your spirit warm our cold hearts and light up our dark minds that we may know and follow your way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated and laying.
Good morning, and welcome to our Senior Sunday Celebration. Hear now the word of God from Proverbs 18, verse 15. An intelligent mind acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for being here today on Senior Sunday to celebrate our graduates and our scholarship winners. Academic achievement is a tremendous accomplishment and something that should be both recognized and celebrated. As a family of faith, we walk alongside these graduates and provide and support them in their journey. Education truly matters. Each of us should never stop learning because life really never stops teaching. The path of spiritual growth is a path of continuing education. Graduates, today, we share in your joy together, and we celebrate what God has done in your life. Don't let your learning lead to just knowledge. Let your learning lead to action. We pray that you will go on to what God has already planned for you and your amazing future when you place it in God's hands. Look back and be proud of what you've achieved. Look forward and create the bright future that you so deserve. So on this special day, I want our message for you to be very clear. We love you, we support you, and we're very, very proud of you. You're not going alone into this next season of life. We aren't saying goodbye. We are welcoming you into the church community in a different kind of way. And please know if you leave, you can come back no matter what, and we will always be here for you as your church family. So with that, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, the adult youth volunteers to please come forward and locate at the end of the receiving line, if you would, please. I'd like to also invite a few others to come forward and form a receiving line when I call your name. First would be Pastor Rachel. Will you please come forward here and join me? Uh, Miss Joanne Kapansky, who is representing the Michael Kapansky Memorial Fund. Would you please come, Joe? Um, Miss Lynn Rouse, the president of the United Methodist Women. Will you please come, Lynn? And Mr. David Kralchuk, who's the president of Swansboro United Methodist Men. David, would you please come forward and join the receiving line? And now, will the graduates please stand to be recognized? I ask that you please come forward when your name is called. And before returning to your seat, will you please stand spaced out in front of the altar railing uh, facing the congregation? So first, Joseph Bricker, please come forward. Mm -hmm. So Joseph is graduating from Croatan High School. He's going to Furman University and he's studying musical performance percussion. Uh, scholarships awarded was the Swansboro United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship Chestnut Fund, the Swansboro United Methodist Women's Scholarship, and the Swansboro United Methodist Men's Scholarship. Congratulations, Joe. Next is Darby Fawner. So Darby is graduating from the Mast Early College High School at Carteret Community College. Uh, she's going to be attending Lees Murray University. She's studying pre-vet medicine. And the scholarships that she's being awarded is the Swansboro United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship Parish Fund Scholarship, the Swansboro United Methodist Women's Scholarship, and the Swansboro United uh, Methodist Men's Scholarship. The next is Grace Edgerton. So Grace is graduating from Croatan High School and will be attending the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, studying biology, biomedical engineering. 
Uh, scholarships is the Swansboro United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship uh, Scholarship with the Chestnut Fund, the Swansboro United Methodist Women's Scholarship, and the Swansboro United Methodist Men's Scholarship. Next is Croft McLean. Croft is graduating from Croatan High School, will be attending the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Uh, Croft is currently undecided, and the scholarships awarded is the Swansboro United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship Chestnut Fund, the Swansboro United Methodist Women's Scholarship, the Swansboro United Methodist Men's Scholarship. Congratulations, Croft. Next is Molly Fay. Molly is graduating from Croatan High School and will be attending the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. We'll be studying biology pre-med. Her scholarships are the Swansboro United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship Kapansky Fund, the Swansboro United Methodist Women's Scholarship, and the Swansboro United Methodist Men's Scholarship. Congratulations, Molly. And last but not least is Alan Szczesneski. Alan, contrary to what your bulletin states, is graduating from Swansboro High School, and he is attending the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and will be studying mechanical engineering. Uh, scholarships awarded is the Swansboro United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship Chestnut Fund, the Swansboro United Methodist Women's Scholarship, and the Swansboro United Methodist Men's Scholarship. Congratulations. Allen. And at this time, we'd also like to recognize scholarship continuation awards for current college, college students that have been selected this year. Uh, when I call your name, will you please come forward to receive your award, and then you may return back to your seat. The first is Emma Frazier. Yes. Emma will be attending Cape Fear Community College and is being awarded the Lucille Crawford Memorial Scholarship and the Swansboro United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship Kapansky Fund Scholarship. I'd like, I'd like to invite Madeline Frazier up. And Maddie's going to be also attending Cape Fear Community College, and she's being awarded the Swansboro United Methodist Church Youth Fellowship Kapansky Fund. And then I'd also like to invite Evan Wilson to come forward. Evan is being awarded the Lucille Crawford Memorial Scholarship and Evan is attending Clemson University studying engineering. And it's great to have you three back with us this morning. If there are any other graduates visiting with us this morning at this time, I'd like to invite you to please stand to be recognized. Do we have any other graduates in the congregation with us this morning? Swansboro United Methodist Church, I present to you your 2022 high school graduates. At this time, I'd like to invite you to stand, please. And in your bulletin, you're going to find an insert that has a liturgy uh, inside of it. Um, will you please join me in the call and response, the liturgy of celebration? Okay. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom, we are taught the way and the truth. Bless our graduates as they now finish this course of study. Walk with the graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety and confusion of purpose.
For the graduates, this truly is a day of new beginnings, a time to remember and move on, and a time to believe what love is bringing. At this time, as a body of Christ, I'm going to ask if you would please extend your arms with your palms up towards our youth as we pray over them together. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Our gracious God, our way maker, we ask that you give these graduates wisdom and guidance in all that they do. Help them to make decisions that align with your word and brings glory to your name. Give them clarity so they don't fall into life's traps. Give them direction so they can live according to the plan you have for them. We pray for your protection over each one. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And graduates, you may return to your seats. This morning's scripture lesson comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were bewildered because they were each one hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying, Why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them in our own tongues speaking of the mighty deeds of God. And they all continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others were mocking and saying, They are full of sweet wine. But Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, 
and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will grant wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And it shall be that every one who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bobby. The story of the church's birthday. Nice. Now's the time to come and share our joys and concerns with one another. If you wrote them in the book that is just outside the, the doors of the sanctuary, um, it will be read aloud. And if not, we'll have a time that you all can lift up names. And, but we know that God knows the names that we say in our heart. Today we have um, a praise, the flower, Rose, pink rose on the altar, um, is in honor of the birth of Jimmy Williams' granddaughter, and her name is Anna Christie Deal. So that's good news. Um, prayers for those impacted by the shootings in Pennsylvania, in Iowa, in Texas, and so many places. Prayers for Debbie McNamee, um, who has health issues. Healing prayers for Roger and Charles Loveless and Sue Crager. And praise and good news for our graduates today. Are there others whose names you would like to lift up? Then let us go to the Lord in prayer. You call each one of us by name, and we praise you for the joy of gathering together with our church family this morning to worship you. We don't have the words we need to give you the proper thanks for all that we enjoy here in the, this wonderful, beautiful place where we can feel the warmth of the sun on our faces and the breeze ruffling our hairs, where we can taste fruits and vegetables that have come straight from the good earth. Lord, the sweetness of cantaloupes and blueberries remind us of the love you have for all your creation and the cool grass beneath our bare feet after a hot summer day is a pure gift of your love. We thank you for these blessings. Lord, in your mercy, and as we gather in this place of safety and peace, we lift to you those whose lives are heavy with burdens of poverty, sickness, fear, loneliness, hunger. We ask today for your mercy and care upon all those whom we have named before you this day, whether aloud or in our hearts. May they feel your presence abiding with them through their pain. May your presence lift their spirits. And we pray that their burdens might be eased. And may they know that their prayers and our prayers for them are always heard by you. Help us to know what you would have us do to help bring your blessed presence to them. Forgive us when we turn aside from the suffering of our sisters and brothers in Christ. And show us how to be your hands here on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Especially today, we lift these graduates who are embarking on a new stage of their lives. May they always remember that they are ever yours and that their church family will always be here for them. 
Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine who continue to live in war or in exile. For those of your children who are hungry in Sudan, Ethiopia, Honduras, in our own land. For those in the path of dust storms in the Middle East and tropical storm wind and rain in Mexico and Brazil and other places. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our leaders in our world and nation that God might grant them wisdom to make just decisions that lead to peace. We especially lift up our church leaders, our bishop, our district superintendent, Pastor Kevin, and leaders in our congregation. May they listen for and heed your voice as they seek to guide us in your path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Now, as I didn't let you do the call to prayer, call after prayer. That will be good. Thank you, choir, and I apologize, Kristen. The gospel lesson um, is printed is is not printed in your bulletin, but the reference is in your bulletin from the 14th chapter of John. I'm not going to read that. I'm going to read to you my interpretation of the lesson that we just read that Bobby just read for us. I'm reinterpreting it. And mind, this is not actually the word of the Lord, so I won't say that because I redid it. Okay. On Pentecost Sunday, the people were gathered together in the Swansboro United Methodist Church. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, a mighty breath from the Spirit of God, and it filled the whole building where we were gathered. And there appeared to them tongues that looked like fire, divided and resting on each person there, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages that they didn't... Um, no, they knew even as the Spirit gave them those words. Now, living along the Crystal Coast, there were devout people from everywhere under heaven, and at the sound, they all rushed to the Swansboro United Methodist Church, and they were quite confused because they all heard them speaking in their own language and regional dialects. And they were amazed, and they wondered, and they said, Are not all these people who are speaking United Methodist? Are they not all from the South? How is it that we each hear them speak in our own style of language? New Yorkers, Midwesterners, beach dwellers, Appalachian folks, Marines, civilians, whites, blacks, Hispanics, people from Alabama and from Minnesota, residents of the inner city and rural areas and even the suburbs, rich people, poor people, Republicans, Democrats. 
parents, children, marginalized people, people without direction, people who feel unsafe, people who've made mistakes, high school graduates, college graduates, visitors from out of town, Methodists, Baptists, and Presbyterians. Unchurched folks, people who've fallen away from the church, we hear them speaking in our own way, in ways that we can understand the mighty works of God. And they were all perplexed, saying to one another, what's up with this? But others were sarcastic. And they said, no doubt they are drunk or high. But Pastor Kevin standing with Kristen and the choir, lifted up his voice and addressed them, and he said, Hey, y'all, from near and far, listen up. We are not high as you think. It's only 11 o'clock. This is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on All people, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your teenagers will see visions and your senior citizens will dream dreams. And even on the people that society looks down upon, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they will have deep insights. And I will show wonders in heaven and signs on the earth. And it shall be that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is my reinterpretation. When I was about the age of these wonderful high school seniors, although things were different in those days, I rode a dinosaur to school. That was a long time ago. One of my favorite songs was a song by a group called The Fifth Dimension, and it was Up, Up, and Away. How many people are old enough to remember Up, Up, and Away? Up, Up, and Away in my beautiful, my beautiful balloon. It was a song about a hot air balloon. But a few days ago, I was thinking about Pentecost. And if you've taken geometry or most any math course, you know that the word penta means what? Five, five like the Pentagon or the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. And the day of Pentecost is exactly 50 days after Easter. Count it. I did. I wanted to make sure. I counted it on my calendar, 50 days. So this, in, in the beginning, in Jesus' day, it was the time to celebrate the barley harvest. And people from all over, Jews from all over came to Jerusalem for the feast. But on that one certain Pentecost, that was the day that the church was born in wind and fire. And I thought about the church and how many symbols for the church there are. A beehive is a symbol for the church because the church is industrious in spreading the gospel like bees pollinating flowers or a ship sailing across the stormy sea of life with the cross as the mast. And I I realized as I was doing that, that I was humming that fifth dimension song, up, up and away in my beautiful balloon. And it struck me that a hot air balloon would be a really good symbol for the church. Don't you think? I mean, when we lived in Alamance County, we used to live um, very close to where they held a balloon festival every year on Memorial Weekend. And from our front yard in the Mount Hermon Parsonage, we could see the beautiful colors of the balloons as they lifted up from the ground to drift among the clouds and... Sometimes they would float right over us and we could hear the rush of hot air being pumped to keep them aloft. It can be a little scary if you don't know what that sound is. My dog hated it. But it takes 
a lot of energy to keep those balloons flying and rushing hot air is what does it. And the sound of a rushing air is exactly what those folks gathered so long ago in Jerusalem heard as they were waiting and praying. Now, have you ever seen one of those hot air balloons that's not inflated? Have you ever seen one? Some of you have. It's not much. It's not much. It's just a big rattan basket lying on its side with attached by ropes to this pile of colorful nylon. That's all it is. That's all it is. And it takes about four people, about a half hour, maybe less, to inflate it just enough to get it to stand up. And then people get in the basket and a big fan blows enough air into the balloon, to the envelope to, to um, expand it, to, to make it get, to inflate it. And then a propane burner, a pro, they have a propane burner, and it um, heats air. It heats the air which rises and causes the balloon to rise. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Now, when it lifts off, the pilot or the driver or whatever you call that person in the balloon does not have a lot of control over that balloon. They can go higher or lower by adjusting the amount of heat that they pump into the the balloon, and if they determine that the wind is blowing in a different direction, a little higher or lower, they can, they can do that, but mostly they just have to ride along on the air currents and go wherever the wind takes them. It's not always the direction they intended to go, as we all learned from the Wizard of Oz. Sometimes they go where they didn't mean to. Doesn't always work out well. But normally the prevailing winds just kind of carry it along. That's all it takes to make a hot air balloon fly, wind and fire. When there's no more fuel, then there's no more fire, and it can't fly anymore, and it just settles back to the ground, and a truck has to come and pick it up. Before Pentecost... The church, the infant church, was sort of like an uninflated balloon. All the parts were there, but they lacked the wind and the fire to get off the ground. But since that day, since that day, that first Pentecost, as recorded in the Bible, there has never ceased to be a Christian church. Never, ever. Sometimes it's been strong and soaring high up with the Holy Spirit, and other times it's kind of sagged down to the earth, but it has never ceased to exist from that moment to this. This is the story of the birthday of the church, and the gospel message took off from that point. The story of Jesus took off from that point, and it was carried by the energy of the wind and the fire of the Holy Spirit, starting in Jerusalem and into all Judea and even to Samaria and from there to the ends of the earth. That day in Jerusalem, 3,000 souls were added to the church, and souls are still being added. Last Sunday, the reconfirmands were added. Three more souls. It's always a joyful occasion when new church members profess their faith in Christ and are added to the church. Doesn't happen as often as we might hope it would, though. There's a story of an old grumpy theology professor. I'm not going to name any names, but I remember him. Anyway, he was noted for his dull lectures. And one day, one of his students met him walking across the campus, and the student said, it was not me. I just want you to know. Hello, professor. And hoping to catch that old grumpy man off guard, he added, do you have the Holy Spirit? 
And quick as a flash, the answer came back. The question is not, do I have the Holy Spirit? The question is, does the Holy Spirit have me? Hmm. The Holy Spirit had those faithful folk gathered in Jerusalem that day. There's no question about that. But the question for us gathered here is, does the Holy Spirit have us? Sometimes I think we're so busy trying to be the church that we forget to take time to think and pray and ponder about what that actually means. And so sometimes the church becomes like an an inflated hot air balloon spread out all limp with the basket lying on its side. Sometimes I think we need some wind and fire to make us come alive, to lift us up. But too often we don't look to God for that. We don't look to God for what we need as the church. We follow the latest five-step plan for church growth, or we go to church, church growth seminars. I've been to a bundle of them. We try what another church is doing. Oh, really? And your membership increased? We're going to try that here. Yeah, I, preachers, we do that all the time. Um, we look into schemes and programs and fixes for declining attendance and membership. And, of course, there's nothing wrong with any of that stuff. But how do we know what's right for us? How do we know what God wants for Swansboro United Methodist Church. How do we know what we need? First, we have to realize that only God can give the church what it needs. That ought to be obvious to us as church people, but it ought to be obvious even to preachers. But it's not always. We think we have to do it. We think we have to come up with novel and innovative ideas. We think that if only we did something new and different, everything will be fine. But the community of believers in Jerusalem didn't try to take matters into their own hands. They didn't try to get organized and venture forth and wave banners and form committees. Don't tell any other United Methodists that I said that about committees. We love them. Um, but, but instead, they obeyed Jesus. Remember, Pastor Kevin told us what, what Jesus said, wait and pray, wait and pray. And that's what they did. They waited and they prayed. They understood the next move was up to God, and he made it. It was early morning. They were all together in the house, gathered, waiting, praying. And the sound, like the mighty wind, rushes across them. The wind was the wind of God, the Holy Spirit, showing up just as he had promised. It was the breath of God flowing over them, surrounding them, stirring them. The very same wind. You know, the Hebrew word for wind is ruach. Ruach. You can say that if you want to. It feels good on your throat. But it's also the Hebrew word for spirit, for breath, wind, all the same word. Same in, same in Greek, pneuma, pneuma, breath, spirit. Wind. So the wind that swept over the believers in Jerusalem was the very same wind that had swept across the dark waters on the first morning of creation. And once again, the breath of God was creating, bringing something new to life. Sudden, irresistible, 
unmerited life, life born just from the grace of God. First they heard it, the sound of the mighty wind, then they saw it. Tongues like fire descended above and rested on each one of them. Kind of like that. Hadn't John the Baptist said it? Had not he said that Christ will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, wind, and with fire? And there it is, the wind and the fire. And at once they begin to speak and proclaim the mighty works of God. And they all spoke of them in language they didn't know they knew. So the very first gift of the Holy Spirit is speech, language, proclamation. The gift of the Spirit is not a silent interior thing. It's no inner mystical experience to be enjoyed by the recipient alone. No, it's an outpouring of God's own energy that touches every life. It is a gift to be shared and to pass, be passed on. The gift of the Spirit is speech. Go and tell, Jesus said again and again. Go and tell. Yes, it came after a time of quiet and prayer, but when it came, it was loud and it was noisy. And it was bright and it propelled the disciples and the church beyond themselves and into their communities and out into the disbelieving world. And we are told that that very day, 3,000 souls were added. Now remember, Christian proclamation is not always well received by those outside the faith. I mean, it's just not. Not everyone in Jerusalem that day responded positively, did they? To the wind and fire of new life. They mocked and said the gathered disciples must have been drinking too much wine, even though, as Peter pointed out, it was only nine o'clock in the morning. But the very exuberance, the very extravagance of this spirit caused observers to conclude this can't possibly be what it looks like. We don't know what this is. This is something new and different. But it was exactly what it looked like. God's spirit unleashed upon an unsuspecting world. And that's what we're called to be. The carriers of God's spirit unleashed on the world. On that day, the balloon of the church was up up and away and we're in it where will the breath of God take us next we don't know we only know that we trust God's spirit and we're ready to ride the holy wind and fire into the future on Pentecost our new adventure begins That's all. And in response to the word, let us continue to worship by the giving of our tithes and our gifts.
accept these our gifts, O Lord, and use them for the furtherance of your kingdom in this world. Amen. Okay. You may be seated. And if you will turn to... I don't know what I did with my hymnal. Ah, there, because yours is over on the other side. If you will turn to page 12 in your hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now, quickly, um, uh, share the peace with the Holy Wave. And now, if you will, the great thanksgiving is, continues on the next page, and if you would stand for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. And the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. All creation groans in labor pains awaiting redemption. We wait in hope, in joyful hope with all your creatures. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He is the living hope in whom we put our trust. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night Jesus gave himself up for us, He took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 
And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Now, these wonderful seniors and Carson are going to help today. We have um, gluten-free if you need it, and we have the... Um, um, rip and sip if you need it. There are also um, Mel and Bryson are going to be anointing on each side with oil if you would care to be anointed and prayed with. It's right there. Um, you may go to them after you have received the bread and the wine. Um, in the United Methodist Church, Everyone is welcome. Everyone. There are no if onlys. Everyone is welcome because the table is not ours, it is the Lord's, and He welcomes all. We use intention and we receive communion. We don't take communion, we receive it. So one of the servers will put the bread in your hand and then you go to the cup and you dip it gently and you only have to dip just a little bit of it. You don't have to put your fingers all the way down in, the, in it. And if it kind of falls apart or if you drop it into the cup, don't go fishing after it. <laughs> we'll give you another one. Bread people. You would. Um, but this is called intention, and we receive in both kinds together, the body and the blood together. Right now, I'm going to serve you all. Okay. The body of Christ, broken for you. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. The body of Christ, Broken for you. Body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Got it. Now you get a cup. <laughs> okay.
The closing hymn is number 549, 539. Postlude will, I believe, be pomp and circumstance. Is that correct? Yes. And so we will, Carson will go, I will go, and then graduates, you come too. And greet, greet your public in the narthex. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace from this day forth and forevermore. Amen.